The internet can be a wonderful place. And a person from r slash St. Louis on Reddit reached out to me and invited me to come look at his amazing Victorian house in the Benton Park neighborhood. This house has four bedrooms, three baths, and over 3,500 square feet, and was built in 1889. Let's go see what's inside. We've just walked inside and one of the first things that really catches us is this leaded stained glass window. Now this is believed to have been original to the house. And we can also see the original hardware here. And let's actually take a closer look at this. We can see a floral motif. There's also a cross that's hidden in there as well. And that might've been something that the original owner would have requested of the designer because they might have had significance to them. Now above here is a transom window and we can see that it is reinforced by cast iron. And this is also leaded stained glass. And the ceilings in here are about 12 foot tall. Now as we start to move through the stair hall, we come to a giant newel post. And this has a daisy motif on the top of it. It also has columns going down on either side. There are shingles on top of the roof line here. It's almost like a little building. So that's something that we haven't really seen yet as we've been exploring these homes. Now, as we look up, there are these corbels supporting an archway and the archway is actually finished on the underside and scored so that it's fluted, which is another detail we haven't seen yet. While we were exploring the Griezig family home, we saw that it was just plaster work above, so there weren't ornate details that were kind of encapsulating the space. Let's continue now into the parlor and we will pass through this passageway. Now above me is fretwork that is believed to be original to the house. It has a Florida Lee motif. And this would have originally had a pocket door on it, though that has been since removed and closed off. So come on in here. As we start to explore the space, we start to see these really amazing details. There's a semicircular dual hung window up here and that is leaded stained glass, also original to the house. And then it does not still have its shutters, but it does still have the encasements for them. The next detail that really catches our eye is this fireplace. So this is also original to the house, it's cast iron. Um, we can see that the marble has been updated, but it looks like it still has the original mosaic tile rug that borders around the fireplace surround. So let's really take a look at this here. And as we look up, it has the original plaster medallion, and that most likely would have had a chandelier suspended from it at one point. However, it looks like it has been closed off in more recent years. And before we leave the space, there's another detail that surrounds this room. So we have trim that delineates the top of the ceiling, and more than likely there would have been wallpaper or stenciling between the two trim pieces on the wall at one point whenever the house was originally built. And then we can also see that the theme of fluting continues. If we look up at the very top piece of trim that's actually on the ceiling, we can see that it is fluted all the way until the stoppers where it turns and rounds corners. So that's something that we're going to be seeing throughout this house is this theme of fluting. So come on through here and we are now going to pass into the dining room. Before we even pass into the dining room, I wanna take a moment to point out the pocket doors. So these are original to the house and we can see that it has these old growth rings and ripples that kind of go throughout the grain of the wood. And this is just not something that can really be replicated. If you do this with new wood, it's just not going to have this kind of spacing on it. So I'm going to go ahead and tuck this back into the wall here and let's start exploring the rest of the dining room. Over on this side of the room, we have another fireplace. This is very similar in style to the one that we just saw in the parlor. Now, as we can see, this is actually in a bay window, but this is not at 45 degrees like most of the homes we've seen. This is opened up a little bit more, a little more flat, a little bit more intimate because it kind of hugs to the side of the room here. Now, if we look up and we saw this in Caleb's house in the second Empire Strikes Back, 
we can see that it has very similar molding as it caps up above the rest of the encasement. Now up on the ceiling is another plaster medallion. It's very ornate, also believed to have been original to the house. Suspended from it is a chandelier that has been added in more recent years. And of course, let's not forget to look down. So this house does have its original hardwood floors on the first level, and then it also has these amazing grates. And this is not really something we've been seeing yet either, are grates in the floor. So I'm not sure if this was added at a later date or if this could have been original to the house. If you know, please just let me know down in the comments. I'm very curious about this. So come on around here. There's another entry, and this probably would have been the entry that was used by the servants to bring food out because the main staircase is actually right around the corner here, and we will get to that in a moment. But first, let's go explore the rest of this house now. Now, off to my side here is an entryway that's going to take us out to the side of the yard, and we'll explore that in just a moment. Now, come on through here. This is the first time we're now seeing a swivel door, so this could be used to shut off the room to maintain heat, and that's something that would have been done back when the house was originally built. So as we walk through here, this space has been converted. This is where the kitchen is now. We can actually see on the floor where an old wall would have been, and this would not have been load-bearing. So back when this house was built, if a wall wasn't load-bearing, you could just put it directly over the hardwood. So we can actually see the outline right here. We can see where maybe an ornate column would have been or some sort of boxed archway. And then we can see exactly where you would have walked through to get to the actual kitchen space. So this is the modern kitchen. There are a few things I want to focus on. So even though it has been updated, it has its original French doors, it has a transom above, and if we take a really close look, the hardware is really unique. It's pointed with a ball top. So let's just zoom in on that and see the hardware here. Walking on now, we can see the maid staircase. And this is really ornate actually for a maid staircase. We can see that it now has another newel post. And this does not match the newel post that we saw in the front of the house. That's a really curious detail. Though it is still fairly ornate, a lot of thought was put into this design, even though this would have been hidden away from guests. Um, so it's, it's very, very curious why it is so decorative and not simple. Now we've seen the entire first floor, so let's start to make our way upstairs. But before we get there, there's one more just amazing detail to point out in the stair hall, and I did not catch this earlier. There's this rounded piece of woodwork here, and we've seen rounded pieces before, and we know just how expensive this would have been and how much work would have been involved in making something curved like this. And I've got a special treat for everybody. As we go upstairs, we're going to really look at the banister because We've never seen anything quite like this. The way that the wood has been bent and grooved is just phenomenal craftsmanship. Let's go see what's upstairs. Before we even get to the top of the stairs, we start to see how the molding transitions to the landing. Now, in a modern house, this would obviously be angled, but we can see here that it curves and we can actually see kind of how they made this because there are these grooves here where we can see that they've been stacked together in the same way that you might make a keystone arch. The segments of wood have all been lined up and placed together to create this arc. So that's just amazing. Now, this is part of the banister I was talking about. We can see that it's been grooved and sanded, smooth, but then it also rounds out and it has a post centered on it. Off to the side of the landing is another amazing detail. We have this angled wall piece and above it is this old gasolier hardware. So we can actually pull this out. Now, originally a flame would have come out of the top here. So it would have been like a candle and to turn it on, you just would have twisted this knob. It would have shot gas through and ignited the flame and voila, you have light. As we now make our way through this stair hall, we are going to look at a few more details in this space. So here is that curved banister that I was talking about. The amount of craftsmanship that goes into this is just mind boggling. If any of you watching have any idea how this could have possibly been made, please let me know. I have my suspicions that maybe it was soaked and warped into this, but here's the part that's really curious is once again, it has this grooving. So it's not flat here, it's all rounded out. And of course, this is actually in a couple sections. So there is a line right here that shows us that this piece is separate from this piece. But still, how to get this curve in one piece of wood 
I'm a little mind boggled. So please, if you know anything about this, let me know down below in the comments because I am very, very curious about how this could have possibly have been crafted. Off to this side of the stair hall is the entrance to the master. Now above this, it does have a really interesting transom. There are carved flowers and petals that kind of dance around in the light here. So let's just take a moment to really see this detail. Walking into the master bedroom, there are some details that immediately catch us. Now we saw this directly below us in the living room or the parlor. The windows are the same, basically. So they're both double hung. They have the leaded stained glass above them. On this side, it's absolutely original to the house. On this side, it looks like it might have been replaced or it could just be in better condition. I'm not completely sure. Um, so that's not really a known thing. And then of course it has the same cubbies here to hide the shutters. Now over on this side, it does have the original fireplace and mantle. They have both been painted over, but we can see right here something really special. It has its original cast iron inset. And this continues with that daisy theme that we've been seeing throughout this entire house. Passing out of the master, there's this amazing old pocket door. And we can see that it still has its original hardware. This is really fairly intricate. And come on over here, I want to show you this. So there is a button that we can press and that opens and closes the latch here. And that's super convenient. That's a lot better than trying to dig it out with your nails um, as we've seen in some of the other houses. So the fact that it actually has this mechanism to release it, really ingenious and fantastic. I'll go ahead and just kind of finish tucking this into the wall. Now there are two closets, one on either side here, just kind of framing out the space. It makes it feel extra grand right here. So we can go ahead and start walking this way. And this is going to take us into kind of a pass through area, which is not original to the home. Well, this area is original to the home, but the closet that's off to this side would have probably originally been a pass over to the maids hall. And then there's a smoking porch right here. So we can go ahead and go out here and just see. Out here from the other side of the door, we can see that it used to have a transom that's been boarded up, but we can see that it still has the original archway and brick above it. So that's a really awesome feature that's been preserved, even though it's no longer functional. Passing through this space, we now come to the master bathroom. And of course, this would have originally most likely been a bedroom that's been retrofitted into a bathroom. And the owner has told me that they have plans to completely redo this space. So there's really not much in here that's original to point out. So let's just kind of keep moving through here. Passing out of the bathroom, I'm now going to show you what would have originally been the bathroom. So right now this is set up as a laundry room, but back when the house was constructed, this most likely would have been an actual bathroom in this house. And we are actually in the maids portion of the house right now. So we can see once again, that other newel post that we saw down by the kitchen, and then this very ornate banister. And up here is a double paned window. There's stained glass on the far side and it's clear on this side. And that's going to offer a lot of insulation. Both of these are original and this is just some of that really curious and very ingenuous detailing that we've seen. Now I had mentioned over on the master closet that that probably was not original. So this is the framework that proves that. There is a newer wall that has been put right here but this most likely would have originally gone straight through to that smoking porch that we saw. And up this flight of stairs is the maid staircase, once again, going to the third floor. And that would have originally been the maid's hall, but we're not going to go up there and see that today. Instead, I'll show you the old real estate photos from before the owner acquired this house. Speaking of, let's go meet him and talk to him about his experiences with this house. Peter, it has been such a pleasure to tour your home. Thank you so much for opening up the doors for us. It's actually a pleasure to show the, the house off. It's, it's, uh, it's truly a much more glorious house than I thought I was going to get when I was moving back to St. Louis. It's, it's really, really beautiful and, and uh, very happy in it. So when you were moving back here, what drew you to this exact house? Um, well, it was a combination of, um, well, it was a combination of how beautiful the house was and the fact that I could get a good deal on it. I had a motivated seller that we actually met with and not his real estate agent. And I made a, a price that was about 90% of what he was asking. And he just said yes at that, at that time. So uh, otherwise, I would have still been in this particular part of town. Um, I was looking 
at Lafayette Square was was really the ideal area, but uh, but this house would have cost about fifty percent more there, as I've mentioned. Uh, Fox Park, uh, Tower Grove East, or other areas I was looking because I wanted this kind of house. And that's amazing that you were able to find this um, because there are so many original details in here. So, what is it like living in a house like this? Um, if you're all by yourself, it's too much house. Um, I've got a daughter; she'll be moving out soon. But I am engaged to be remarried to my ex-wife, um, and she's going to be moving in. Uh, so that makes it a lot more homey. I mean, one thing about a house like this is it's extremely grand, but it, it's not cozy. Uh, so if you're all by yourself in a house that's this big, you wind up in very few rooms and the rest of the house is kind of like, it's beautiful. And if I'm going to throw a dinner party or, or something like that, it'd be great. But, but, uh, um, but another thing is obviously neighborhood. I mean, the neighborhood is really terrific and, um, it's got so many great restaurants that are in, well, depending on your, turn, your, your, your idea of walking distances. Uh, my daughter's idea of walking distances, one block is too far. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, if you want to do breakfast, you've got egg that's right here. You've got Shameless Grounds, you've got Mud House. Um, if you're going to go out in the evening, Peacemaker is right back there. Truman's unfortunately closed. You've got Soulard right over there, Yamanja, Brazil. Cherokee is close by. It's really a wonderful neighborhood. It's the kind of place that, um, that you don't see in more spread out American cities. Uh, so, and it's, it's one of the features of St. Louis that, that I think is terrific. And I mean, I've got Blue City Deli is right up the block, you know, which is St. Louis's favorite sandwich restaurant which, with good reason. But then there's a lot of other places that are, that are close by that are also good. So the neighborhood is really good. It's a really convenient neighborhood. But walking your dog in Lafayette Park is really easy. It's, it's just a really good location. Well, I'm so happy for you that you have this magnificent house in such a walkable and very densely populated neighborhood with so many amazing restaurants and amenities just in walking distance. Um, this is not something that we see in a lot of newer cities and newer planned communities. So whenever we find this in these older neighborhoods, it's something to really cherish and to really kind of put your interest back into because this is not something that can just be replicated out in the suburbs. This is something that was designed to be walkable from the very beginning. And the fact that people are still enjoying it almost 200 years later just speaks volumes to the design and the quality of these homes and neighborhoods. So, Peter, I want to thank you so much again for allowing us into your house. It was my pleasure. Oh, Power perfect. of Reddit. Peter is also a filmmaker and director. Make sure to check out his short film, The Dryad Tree, here on YouTube. We'll put the link down in the description. When you're over there, leave a comment and let them know that this house sent you. Thank you everyone again for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time on This House.